Um, hey guys, this is Coach K, the head coach from the Frankfurt Galaxy, and you're listening to the American Football Show. Welcome to the American Football Show, powered by EP Sports. EP Sports is the top supplier in the UK for all of your American football needs, helping players and coaches reach their potential since 2007. Check them out today at epsports.co.uk. Today we have another guest from the European League of Football joining us, but not as an elf baller, but as an educator of the elf ballers. We have Frankfurt Galaxy head coach Thomas Costling. Thank you so much for taking your time out of the day for us and welcome to the show. Hey guys, uh, thanks for having me. It's, uh, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Thank you. So we'll start at the beginning. Tell us how you got into American football and did you start off playing or did you go directly into coaching and where have you been so far with American football? Yeah, I really got in contact with the sport around my age of 14, I guess. In our school, there was something like before the big summer break, what we have in Germany for six weeks. Normally in school there, you call it project week. So you have, you can, you can choose yourself to different classes, like for example, Czech or I don't know, geography or some, some other interests that your normal classes. And one of these was flag football because uh, one of the top teams in Germany to that time, the Hanau Hawks, who played in the first league, they made something like a project week for us, for the, for the kids, and playing flag football. And I, it looked interesting, so I got elected into that. So I played one week flag football, and I got really, yeah, really um, intrigued with the sport and made a lot of fun, even though I still played soccer like the most guys did. So I, I played for a couple of years, but when I reached the, the age of 18, then I, I went to finally to the, to the club again, to the Hanau Hawks, and played two years of youth football. Back in the days, you played until you're 19, so I played with 18 and 19 then. And then I played four to five years or six years for the Hanau Hornets in the second German football league. And then 2007, I, I, checked, I switched teams to the Frankfurt Universe. After the NFL Europe got cancelled, the Frankfurt Universe got invented by the fans from the Galaxy, from the former Galaxy. Then I started to play in there with a goal to get to the first league, which we did. Um, as a player, I reached just the second league till 2014 or 13 was my last season. And then I became a DC right away. I got lucky that my that the former head coach of the Frankfurt Universe, Mike Williams, um, they had some problems with coaching staff and he remembered me because I played for him. And he said, hey, do you want to be the defense coordinator? And I, I felt it was a great opportunity coming right from the players, players field to coaching and even in that position. So it was a big chance. I took it and the rest is basically history. I mean, I, I became the defense coordinator, Frankfurt Universe 214. We go into the first league after the 215 season. Then I went to the GFL1 with some playoff experiences, with the German bowl experience. We unfortunately lost. And then I became head coach 2019. And 220, the COVID season stopped everything, but then the ELF happened. So I got the, I got basically the, the question if I want to join the Frankfurt Galaxy in the ELF, and that was, yeah, after a quick thought, a no-brainer to to t take another challenge and being the head coach of the Galaxy now. And uh, so, what position did you play? I played linebacker. I played linebacker, inside, outside, whatever was best. Yeah. <laughs> Craig's a defensive coach, so he's going to be really interested in that. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> and so obviously you mentioned there you've, you've played in the GFL as well. Um, how do you feel about the level of football in the ELF compared to the GFL and other European leagues, if you've got any uh, notice of them? As, as a player, I was GFL too, but of course I, I coached then GFL 1. I think um, right now it's basically pretty much the same level, I have to say, from the top team. So I would say we as a Frankfurt Galaxy, we would play for the championship in the GFL 2. But on the other hand, I'm pretty sure Dresden Monarchs, Schwäbischal Unicorns or yeah. the other teams who are good, they would, they would play for the championship in the ELF too. So I think the top of the, the, top of the league is pretty much on the same level. Um, what I like about the European League of Football a little bit more is that there's more competi competition in the, on, the, on the lower teams, right? So you never know if the A teams beat the 16th or otherwise around because every team seems to have really good playmakers. And this is something, so you really have to scout for every team. There's not really a walk-by 
So for example, we when we get into Barcelona in two weeks, I mean they're getting better and better. But yeah. if we would if we would take a slowly a slowly start there, they can hit us with their offense because they're really good playmakers. And this makes this league with all the new experiences and the European flair very interesting. And I think it will only grow and get better in the next upcoming years. Yeah, we we've been talking about like Barcelona and Cologne. They kind of started off the league in the bottom, but they've clearly kind of got it together and they're shooting for the playoffs now. Yeah, it's going to be interesting how how this plays out. I mean, in the other division too, with with Leipzig and, and the Rostock yeah. Panthers, right? So it's it's no secret that the EFL and the the GFL the in contention for the top talent in their respective countries. Do you think that they can both survive long term, and how do you see it working out? I mean, of course, they can both survive. It's, it's just, I think, to be honest, from the ELF, the, 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 the goal from the ELF is to be the top league in Europe. And I don't think they will, they will be always on the same level like the GFL like right now. And this is not with disrespect to the GFL, but I think the plan is really to get more people to the, to the, to the stadiums, get more money involved, get, grow the sport a little bit. So I think the, the European League of Football has some work to do in the next one, two, three years that they really take to another level because then I think they only can exist okay so we really need to need to push the the level and the sponsoring and stuff and then I think it's it's they can they can exist but it's not going to be like two leagues they're on the same on the same level I don't think that I think at one point the ELF will go off the charts or maybe in three years they will not existing anymore yeah I think we all we all agree it's got such good potential but that it could crash and burn quite quickly that that's business. I mean, that was a, that was always in the heads. I think of the guys. I mean, we saw that with one or two franchises who tried to be part of it, but because yeah. then for for different reason, it didn't it didn't uh, yeah it didn't uh, get out. But um, all, on the other hand, also in the future, you never know if maybe one team maybe fall out of this because it, it is a financial business and it costs a lot of money. I mean, we with the Frankfurt Universe and our successful days. There was a lot of money involved, and with all the great teams in the GFL, like New York Alliance, like Dresden Monarchs, even with Schwebischal, there's a lot of money involved. And this league will will go that way with the franchise and the business level, but money is a big part. And every year, a franchise has to decide and hope to get sponsors to 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 get that money around to to build that club in this league. And and this is a focal point. And and everybody who who doesn't think about it or think that's not about the money is, is just wrong. I mean, that's how sport grows. You need money. You need money to develop players, to get better equipment, to get fields, to get coaches, to get players. I mean, that's our goal, that the players who who working so hard for it, not just get whatever, 100 euros or whatever, that they get paid at one yeah. point for, for what they bring into the table because the level is pretty good. So as a head coach, what do you think of the differences that you've seen coaching in the ELF compared to other jobs you have? Uh, is it, for example, more professional attitudes with the players you're coaching? Um, still, I would say it's it's from us being a top team in the GFL, it's pretty much the same. I mean, I, I learned a lot from, from my former coaches, Marcos Gran or uh, John Rosenberg or Mike Williams, like I said. I mean, we they already had a great level of organizing. And I, again, I think we just we just follow these steps. So we we running the program the same like we did with the Frankfurt Universe. We hope really in the future that we can grow and grow, adding more coaches, even though I have to say this is the biggest coaching stuff I had in my career, in my short career right now. We have around 18 coaches um, who are there. I think that's pretty good, even though there's not one full-time coach on the stuff. So that is, I mean, that is another thing. I mean, there's something we need to grow to, to get full-time coaches there, see where where my position is in the next upcoming years. But that comes if the if the growing of the league stays and and getting bigger then of course then you have to make decision for your own life what you're doing but right now i still have to say the gfl was a was a great level and is a great level and you cannot play that down i don't want it because they they are really good teams so i would say what we're doing right now is on the top gfl level still yeah and speaking to other players that have played in the gfl like they 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 agree they think at the moment the, the level is right up there altogether yeah, it is. It is. And I can say that because I played the top teams. We beat Braunschweig, for example. We lost to Hull in close games. And you can say the, the level to play against Hamburg, for example, or Rotslav is the same. So, yeah, um, yeah there's, there's right now no, no give and take. But we see how it grows and get better in the next upcoming years, hopefully with more European teams joining them, which makes it a lot more interesting then. 
Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we'll get to it to other cities as well. Um, but if you want to kind of take our listeners through, because I'm, I'm sure they, they won't know too much, what is the daily routine of a head coach? Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of video, right? Um, I mean, you're, you're looking, you're looking much tape, you look in the games, you're looking, you're looking to practice. Basically, when we're going through routine, we're playing a lot of Sundays, which is tough. And I mean, I have a, I have a day job too. I'm a police officer in, in, in Frankfurt, so you can bet I'm, I'm waking wow. up at, at 6, 6, 20, 6, 30, then going to work, try to find my, find my time there, doing some breaks to, to, to coach. And of course, making a lot of phone calls with coaches and players and then watching video video preparing for practice and yeah we have three times a week practice we have some video stuff during the week so basically it's 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 a long day so i'm like i said i'm leaving at 6 30 on on practice days tuesday thursday friday and coming back at after midnight that's, that's yeah. a normal routine yeah but but it's a lot of fun so it's worth it i guess but yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, video is the biggest thing. I mean, you need to you need to see what your guys doing right. You need to see what they doing wrong. On the sideline, you see basically nothing, just your emotions and and how you feel about the play. But then, video is the is the biggest key. And I think this is something where Europe has to make a lot more bigger steps to grow the sport. That we find the time to get even on everyday players into the video room, you know, to teach them one or two hours what they did wrong, what they did right. I think this is the biggest biggest um yeah hole we need to fill to make the play even more better than it is right now yeah we were speaking yeah. to michael bird's song from the kings and he, he's played in america so he was saying like the the, the skill level's good in the elf but in yeah. obviously in america which is very football centric you're seeing a physio twice a day you're in classroom all day so it's yeah a couple of steps before we're at that level Absolutely, absolutely, and it will take some years too. Again, it all starts with how much, how much the players have to work beside playing football, and this is the biggest thing. I mean, I would love to practice five days a week, but it yeah. makes no sense because you, yeah. you don't get everybody there, and even you have physiotherapy. I mean, we are in a good position, I guess. We have a good partnership with the physiotherapy, physiotech with us, and and especially all our imports, they can go there basically every day. You know, but um, you need to have the German players doing that too. But um, yeah. when it when it's starting with video meetings, extra and stuff like that, this is tough. And at one point, for the normal workers we have on the team, and this is still the the majority of it, it's it's not doable. I mean, they have families, they have they have stuff they have to take care of, and for this, there's there's less money too, too less money for for making that the priority in their lives right now. Yeah. So for those watching that would be interested in getting into coaching and starting that journey, um, how would you say they go about that and what, what advice would you give them? If you want to start to get coaching, I mean, find, find a team that's next, next to your local area and maybe a, a better team and try to be a walk-on coach or whatever. I mean, we had that with the Galaxy or with the universe before. I'm always open. If a guy says, hey, I just, I just want to see what you guys do and I want to be a coach, then, hey, I think the most teams are very very helpful and welcome and at least you can have a walk-on spot for two three months and then look around and and if they get to know you a little bit as a person i think there's always a job you can do maybe then the next season to be whatever a little assistant coach at a position and, and then you can move up the ladders i mean we had some coaches that are moving up the ladders and now our position coaches are now our coordinators this is what it is and uh, just be just be open and not shy to ask teams if they can get help because especially in europe i think every team has maybe a spot where they can get help. And is it in the beginning just to bring the balls or putting the cones off? Yeah, yeah maybe that's it. But that's where you get the foot into, into the door. And then it depends how you connect with the coach and, of course, how you what you, what you uh, get for knowledge from practice and from books and whatever. And then I think everything will find its way. But that's the first step. Don't be shy to contact teams and coaches. Maybe not during the season. That's going to be tough. But in the off season, yeah. so they have time to, to tell it and then go for it. Just, just ask. Are you surprised about how well the ELF has taken off with fans? Um, I'm, I'm happy that this is. I mean, we, we, we. That was our vision a little bit and our dream. I mean, of course, like I said, with the GFL, we had a good fan base and it was more like what we can change or what have to change. And the hope was 
that more fans getting excited with a with a new program with a with the way that got broadcasted and stuff like that. What I really mm-hmm. surprised is what the outlook of the league is, and it's really impressive. And you can you could feel when we saw the first game, we were on our way to Hamburg on a Saturday with a bus, and we saw the first ELF game. I think it was Barcelona Stuttgart, yeah. and it looked amazing. I mean, all the players in the bus were like, "Are you are you kidding me? How <laughs> this looks so good, right?" <laughs> and and this yeah, and this is one thing. I mean, this is this is so important. I think the league really represents themselves so so good in the TV and so good in the little in the little highlight yeah. videos. I mean, basically. Yeah. I don't know. In, on our webpage, run the A. You after the game, one hour after the game, you see different highlight sequences, like you see in the NFL. You see, yeah. you see the highlights two hours after the game, so everybody can see it. And these are the little things that were missing in the past that you get more more fans attracted because now they can see the highlights. They see good plays, even in all the leagues of Europe, in Finland, in in Ital- at Italy or whatever. You see highlight plays like you see on Sundays in the pros. It's maybe not the same speed, but one-handed catches, great tackles, yeah. great runs. The, the guys are good, and now they got represented into the outside, and I think that's the biggest key for the success, and we are very happy, and uh, hopefully more fans will join in the next couple of years because, um, yeah, the league is pretty good. Yeah, no. I totally agree with what you said. The main thing is you're putting a brilliant product on the field. The games have all been superb, and you know we've watched nearly every game, and it's just been great. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's the thing I I, I I said before is the good thing is there are many close games. I mean, in every league you have maybe a top team, you have a you have a team that's that's playing under their level a little bit. But like I said, there's there's for whatever Stuttgart beating Barcelona now Barcelona is getting stronger now. Rockler loses to Cologne, but th- these are not boring games. They have a lot of excitement no, into no. it, and and this is this is a good success story I think, and this is maybe maybe even more important than, than everything else, that every team has some highlights, every team can win, and every team already won. And yeah. I think that makes that makes so much more hunger for more, and I think that makes a lot of teams from Europe more interested in joining this league because they're seeing you're well-produced, you're well, you're well, um, yeah, um, how you put it, you're, you're well-showed in the mm-hmm. TV, and that makes sponsors interested, and of course your program, and, and hopefully a lot of great organizations join it. And to, to kind of come off of that question, what other cities or countries would you specifically like to see get a team, whether that's for competitive reasons or maybe you just want to go to that city sometime? Is there any any teams in particular? Um, I I think they, they have the plans to putting some European metropoles uh, into it, metro uh, cities. And I think that's good. I'm just... I hope there are some top programs from Europe, maybe from Austria is joining this, that would be really helpful. And I think every team from another country like Germany will have a good shot to being a good product because they can basically get a national team on their field with, yeah. with some imports yeah. with nobody had. So just, just imagine the Swarco Raiders maybe joining and getting 12 or 14 imports on the roster. This would be, Crazy. wow, this is going to be a great team, right? But that's what we want. And this can be the same with 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 Paris, this hopefully London would be very cool if that coming just from the history and of course the, the flash that London is, is bringing, maybe Amsterdam, I don't know. I, I think Germany will have one or two spots left, but then I really think Germany is off. It should be off because, I mean, we're competing already with, with five other teams for players. Yeah. If you bring two more teams, at one point there's, there's enough and you have to play on a different level, but on a certain level. So it's going to be tough to get the great German players, especially with, with the rules we have. But um, from Austria to even Sweden, Netherlands with Amsterdam, they have a good program and they tried it in the past. Even in the Eastern Europe, I, I, I mean, not only Rotslav has to come there, maybe there's Prague, maybe there's Jubiljana, I don't know. So hopefully many, many teams join. I think it's it's going to be really cool to, to see like we had now in Poland last weekend to see a different culture, to see how how the how the how the games are played there with the atmosphere and surroundings. So it's just a win for for every country that comes in. So I'd like to say a huge congratulations, basically, for reaching the playoffs. Um, the guys, oh, yeah. you've, they've only gotten better and better each week. I've really enjoyed watching them. Um, who do you view as your biggest competition right now, and what do you think you gives you the edge to to take home that championship? Yeah, thank you. I, I mean, our goal is uh, from day one, we want to get better and better. And we know from our experience or my experience from the GFL, it's not important how you good, how good you are in the start. You need to get better and hit your peak at, 
week seven, eight, nine, and then rolling with it, you know, and, and you need that time. And I think that's what, we, what we're doing. And I'm really proud how we represent ourselves basically in the last two weeks against a good competition of Hamburg and Rotslav. Yeah. I mean, you could see that we are really playing good sync sound football. And this is what this team is all about. So I would, I would say our biggest enemy are ourselves. I mean, I know it's a, it's a saying, but we are, we are total complete. I mean, we have a great offense. We have a great defense. We have great players for special teams. I, I think we are the most complete team in the league. And, and so this is, this is maybe our burden. This is our mission to really put that on the field every week. And especially now with the, I think you can say that we are maybe the team to beat in the league. So everybody is really hyped to, to beat us. And this is something we need to take care of and really have to handle the pressure, especially when it comes to the players, because we know in one game, everything can happen. So I'm, I've been part of two rainy monsoon games in the past in the playoffs. And then when it's raining so hard, in September, it doesn't matter how fast your receiver is if you cannot cut. So your individual skill level may be put into even so everything can happen. So you have to have the mental toughness and the and the vision of being a champion. And that's what we try to put in the heads. Talent wise, I think we're on a good on a good way to to maybe get that title and that's our goal from the beginning. What moments in your football career so far have you been most proud of? As a coach? Yes. Or a player. Um, to, to go to the universe 2007 with the vision to, to go up to the first league, you know, and we, we started in the fifth league with the fans, with the vision to bring a little bit of the purple football back to Frankfurt and then growing with the organization from year to year, going to the second league, then going to the first league. And then at one point reaching the German bowl, that was something special when you were a player and a coach who was there from day one, because that was something why you started it. So I think yeah. personally, that was a really special moment walking into the German bowl and, and competing there. It was really cool. Um, other than that, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of many moments, especially when players coming through and when you see players growing, you have under your wing a little bit like Sebastian Gomez. He came 2015 and we started him to put him on outside linebacker. He played running back before. And when I see how, what a great player he is right now. And that has a lot to do with him because he's so talented and doing so much. But this makes you proud. Or when we're talking about last, last play, uh, game when Joshua Posnanski, he, he was a safety, a, a young safety came, came to us. And now he's making two pick six in this league. Yeah, and he, he, progressed. Yeah, great game. he progressed so much as a player and as a human because you're growing with these guys. That these are the moments that makes you proud because you see you give the players maybe a little bit more than just being a football coach. You 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 share your time with them the last five six years and they becoming good, great good men and and good players of course. So these are the moments maybe that makes you the most proud when you see the guys doing good. That's good to hear. Um, we've actually got some questions from some of your players as well. Uh, we've had to ask around. Um, so this is from Sebastian Gautier. Who is Nacho and why is he important to the team? <laughs> Nacho is my little dog. Uh, <laughs> he's my little Pomerian dog. And <laughs> I don't know, sometimes I bring him to practice. I put him <laughs> then in the car later on, but the guys love him because he's, how, how should I say it? You don't, he's not really very social to everyone from the beginning. So when the players come in, he's barking every time. He's really a little dog. He has three kilos and they're making fun of him. So I think he's good for the chemistry. They love him. <laughs> he's a little guy with a lot of heart to fight. So <laughs> <I guess what. laughs> it's not the dog in the fight, it's the fight in the dog. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we've got another question from some of your guys. This is from Cadell and, and from Sebastian. Um, how many babies do you have to do on a Friday? Yeah, too many, too many. But no, <laughs> too many is wrong because, to be honest, when I have to do burpees, then the guys did something good because I always have yeah. five goals of the week. Every week I send them five goals. So, for example, this week was a have Rotlav under 17 points, under one uh, 200 yards passing, get two turnovers and something like that. And for every goal they reach, I have to do five burpees. And, for, of course, if they fail the, the goal, then they have to do the five. So it's always a little competition every week. And the last two games, they showed off. I can tell you, I had to do 25, 30 burpees. Um, I, I, I said already my wife is happy because I stay in shape so, but um, it's tough. But, but it's a good laugh every time when they see that my, my head is getting red and more red because after the 15th is tough. So it's a good fun thing. I do it. 
I, it's tough for me, but I like how the how the guys react. So it's always good to have these kind of games in between the team. That's awesome. Uh, and so a couple of final questions. These are just for fun. We've asked everyone who's come on so far. Um, you're stuck on a desert island for one year and you get to bring one of each of the following. So what is the okay. one meal you want on, on, on tap? You have a, a full supply of one meal. <sighs> Donut kebab. Oh, Donna, yes. <laughs> nice. Love it. Um, what album are you bringing? A musical album? Oh, that's a good question. Um, my favorite back in the days was Dr. Dre, The Chronic 2001. I love that album. Classic. Great choice. Classic. Yeah. Uh, you get to bring one celebrity with you. They can be from the past. They can be from the past. I think, oh, uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, I think I would love. <laughs> yes. he, cool. he seems like a really cool guy and has so much energy and he has so much success. I mean, he came out of nowhere, basically, and now he's one of the most famous guys in the world, so that's impressive. Great and let's see, let's see what he does with the XFL there, right? He'll probably bring his whole gym with him as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm getting in shape too then. <laughs> um, you got to watch one sports team. The Minnesota Vikings, even it breaks my heart every year because they basically <laughs> yeah, can can win it all. I, I've been to a lot of sad days with them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and finally, you get uh, I'll, you got water, but you get to bring one other drink. I love Rattler. It's a mix of beer and white lemonade. I don't know if you know if the word here in Germany is Rattler. So you mix I whatever. So. Handy. Yeah, Shandy, Shandy, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's basically it. I love that drink. When it's cold, I would take yeah, that. Yeah, nice light beer to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. True. <laughs> true. Well, Coach K, thank you so much for answering all our questions. We really do appreciate it. Is there anything you want to say, anyone you want to shout out or anything? Uh, shout out to my guys of the Frankfurt Galaxy, all the helpers, but um, especially the team, the guys. I mean, you guys playing balls out the last couple of weeks get a good rest in the bye week next week we're going back to work and and try to get that title right and yeah thank you to you guys it's always it's good to have so many guys talking about the european league of football and this is also important i mean everything starts slow but it's it's great to to see that so many so many people like you guys putting your time and invest time to to just talk about the show talk about some players putting players on the map that maybe not so so yeah, so present in in many minds. So so good job on that, and thanks for for doing this for us too. Ah, oh, thank you. That's very kind. I appreciate it. And um, is there any social medias you want to give out so people can follow you or anything? Yeah, they don't have to follow me, but uh, follow the Frankfurt <laughs> Galaxy. Look at the players. They need that. They need more followers. So I think that's important for them. <laughs> you will find me when you want, but <laughs> I'm not a big social media guy. <laughs> <laughs> and of course we'll we'll put all those socials in our videos and our podcast um you can find all this stuff on our social medias which are craig uh, yeah so on instagram and twitter it is tafs underscore uk and on facebook or youtube you'll find us just type in that american football show and we'll pop up um, please do leave us feedback, what you want to hear, who you want us to have on, um, what we're doing well, what you'd like to hear. Um, anything else before we get off, guys? Nope, just thanks for coming on, Coach. Thanks for, obviously, your time's uh, assess and essence to you, so thank you very much. And uh, thank you all for listening. Make sure you head over and check out our friends at EP Sports for all your NFL equipment needs, and we will see you next week.